bother me right now. I'm busy. Huh. Yeah, I'm busy comparing a couple of firearms. Uh, so if you all have something else to do, no, we're glad you came. Just kidding. Hickok 45, comparing the Python with the 686. Okay, shooting it. Uh, give you a couple of impressions while we have the four inch Python. Four and a quarter inch to be exact. <laughs> Thought I would, uh, oh, because I've talked about the 686 a lot, the 5E6, and, and how they compare, and which I'd rather have maybe, and all that kind of thing. So I would do a little, uh, just a little quick comparison, and uh, you might be trying to make the same decision. Maybe you have made the decision. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you're afraid you made a mistake. Maybe I will confirm that you made a big blunder. Or maybe I will uh, confirm that you did not make a mistake. <laughs> I don't know. You don't pay attention to what I say. I've got two 686s out here. i got a new one, 686 Plus. Well, relatively new. You've seen that. I've had that for a while. i got several videos on it. That's got the ugly key lock. You know, that's the uh, seven-shot model with the uh, frame-mounted fire pin and everything. So it's a little bit of the discussion. But since I happen to have a 4-inch 686, and this is essentially four inch uh, python, four and a quarter. Uh, similar guns, they weigh the same. They shoot the same cartridge. <laughs> they look something alike. And you could say that Smith & Wesson copied the python, right? When they went to the L frame, because that's kind of what the python is. Same weight frame, more or less. And with the underlug, full underlug, you know, that was, uh, I think, in about 1980. The 686 came out. The 586, I guess, was a little before that, maybe. Maybe not. And uh, I forgot what I know about it. But they're very similar. The thing you're missing, especially, the most noticeable with the 686 is what? The beautiful rib on the top of that barrel. That's what really distinguishes the python, doesn't it? It just, it just uh, sets it off. And is, I guess there's some people somewhere that don't think it looks good, maybe, but I have never met one. Uh, generally, they're just considered gorgeous. Even if you don't like Colt, you don't like the Python or any of the Colt revolvers, and never have, you have to admit the Colt Python is a gorgeous firearm. Uh, it just really is. And I've always, I've been one of the first to admit, I've had four or five of them over the years, but uh, that I always traded them off because I preferred the grip and the feel and actually shooting of the 686 of the Smith & Wesson, you know, even a K-frame or whatever. They just have always felt better to me and operationally and everything. I've tried to like the Pythons, and I do like them, uh, but I've ended up trading them off for uh, other, other Smiths, generally speaking, right? So, but they're beautiful and they're great guns. And, you know, it does come down to that to some, uh, some extent for people and their preferences. It's what they're going to do with them and how much they shoot, how much experience they've had shooting. Let's be honest. Uh, as I've said before, you could put me on a NASCAR racetrack. I've never driven a race car. And you could pull out uh, what you consider the best car in the race and the worst car in the race. Somebody just getting into it doesn't have the money and they just don't have as much, as many millions in their <laughs> NASCAR vehicle, you know? And I could drive them both around that track and I probably wouldn't be able to tell any difference. You know, because I'm inexperienced, you know, not in driving, but with that kind of car. I just, it, after a while, maybe a few years, I would, right? But uh, in the same with firearms, the less experience you have, the less difference you notice. Okay, does that make sense? But anyway, I don't get off on that, that topic too much. The Python, uh, you know, again, this is the, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll link to the Python, well, the first video on this, uh, four inch model, perhaps. Uh, you know, nice gun, apparently Colt very quickly. Colt has, you know, had some problems early on with the action. Mainly it looks like the, the side plate was loosening up a little bit. And then Hammer Spring, they had a few light strikes on some. This wasn't like widespread, everybody that bought them or anything, but there were enough of them that they addressed it and they've strengthened the, the Hammer Spring, I guess, and they've tightened up that screw and they've addressed that problem. We've shot two of them pretty extensively the last month, month or two and you know not any issues with them okay so uh they seem well made now and uh and I'm, I'm pretty impressed with them for you know some negatives but i'm pretty impressed with them 
So, but mainly I wanted to compare it while we still have it with uh, with my 686. And I, I think I had mentioned earlier in another video that I was I was really interested in buying a four inch when they came out with the new Python, the 2020s. And it was so long coming out, I ended up buying the 686. Couldn't turn it down. It has the combat grips and everything. It just feels great. And I like a 686, great shooter and everything. Uh, so I went ahead with that. So I don't know about the four and a quarter Python or not. I like it. Uh, great shooter. If I'll have to have one, <laughs> have to have one or not, uh, but I, I like it. All right. So uh, comparison wise, like I said, I just shot them. I'm going to shoot them again with some Magnums. They're about the same weight. Of course, the barrel on the, the Colt is a little bit longer, quarter of an inch, but I, I weighed them and they come out about the same. Uh, I've got heavier, maybe bigger grips on this, so maybe it kind of evens out. There's not enough difference to write home about, okay? The weight's about the same in these two uh, configurations. Uh, they're both very popular firearms. My gosh, I talk about iconic, a, a four inch Python and a four inch, uh, you know, 686, you know? You can't beat either one, can you? So you can't go wrong with either one. They both are great shooters. Let's put some on the gong. <laughs> How about a ram? I'm going to shoot a ram instead of a buffalo today. All right. How about a cowboy? The Magnum, dead center. How about a, uh, let's smoke a pot before we go too far here. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to shoot him before he fell. I had no bullets left. I couldn't do it. That was going to be impressive if I had hit that can before it fell. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's a nice shooter. Let's load this one up. And then, oops, what, what was I shooting? I was shooting magnums. Oh, I know what I must have done. I must have stuck some magnums in the end of that box. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, as I was uh, uh, arranging the ammo, we've been shooting here, messing around. Yeah, I said they look dramatically different. And uh, I just pulled out the, the six magnums from the end of that. <laughs> those were definitely magnums I just shot. Believe me, you can tell when you pull the trigger, right? Uh, there's no mistaking a 38 Special for a 357 Magnum. You people who shoot, have shot them, uh, you know what I'm talking about. All right, now let's see. I haven't shot this as much, so uh, we won't be too judgmental on the gun. I'll try the uh, Buffalo. Try the gong. Boom. <laughs> and how about, oh, we don't have any pot lit to smoke, do we? There's a paint can, an old paint can right there, though. Yeah. And another one. <laughs> and a bowling pin. <laughs> I think that's six. It is. Good shooter. All right. So. The bottom line is, uh, there was really no need to do a video. I could have just done a posting said, hey, there's not enough difference between these two revolvers. Buy the one. Nah, there, there's some things to talk about. We've talked about a little bit of it already. The grip is different. Uh, I, this The Smith feels better. Even with, this has kind of custom, the combat Smith & Wesson grips on it. But even with the standard Magnum grips, big grips or whatever, uh, that come on these, they feel better to me than the Colt grips always have. That's, that's one of the reasons I've always traded off the Pythons. I don't think there were as many grip options back in the 70s, 80s, you know, when I was doing most of my gun, well, not most of it, but my early gun trading and buying, selling, that kind of thing. And then, too, it's such a beautiful firearm, the Python, that I think I was always resistant to switch out the grips. You know, on it, I just, they're just beautiful. The grips look good. The gun's beautiful. I just wanted to kind of keep them the way they were. And because of the cylinder latch, you pull it to open it. That's one of the big differences, okay? So we're doing a kind of a versus video here. When you're shooting and you're empty and you get a click, you're in combat 
and it's time to reload. Now, the way I do it, people do it differently. I, I used to shoot one of these in some competition in the USPSA for about a year, messed around with it. When you're empty, all right, there's your thumb on that latch. It's just so simple, pushing forward, open it up this way I did it, bring it down, pop the rounds out, grab more rounds, put them in. I did it with my right hand, and you're back up in action, okay? Uh, and that's one reason most people, now I, tell me if I'm wrong, I don't do the USPSA thing these days, no time for that, but uh, most people in revolver competition, when I was messing around with this, they were using maybe a 625, I did that too, you know, with the full moon clips, uh, where they're all in the, in the clip, but if they're using a revolver like this, one of these, I don't remember anybody using a python, okay, or a colt. There might have been somebody, it was because that's the gun they had or whatever. Uh, the 686 was really popular, I think still is. Model 27s are really popular for that. And part of that is because you're pushing forward on that thing and it just, it just seems more intuitive, okay? Whereas with the colt, the python, as great a gun as it is, and you're empty, you gotta kinda, it's, you gotta shift your grip more and pull on that cylinder latch, okay? From there on, it's about you know the same, of course, and you back up in action. But pulling on the cylinder latch is just not as intuitive. I've never liked that as much. Not a big deal at all, you know, just plinking around and shooting, and even in competition, you learn to deal with that sort of thing. But it is a point worthy of being made, I think. Uh, this gun, the Python, is supposed to be like the ultimate revolver, okay? If you've ever been around people that compete, they're in race car or whatever they're doing, you know how guys are, we guys are. And I guess women too, they're in the competition, but we never hesitate to spend whatever we have to to, to have the best equipment, you know? And uh, it's not like in basketball, you can't buy your way into a, being a better basketball player by buying a more expensive basketball is usually, right? Uh, you need a shooter you can't. Sometimes though in competition, you know, a better gun will help you a little bit. Not, not, it won't solve your problems, but it'll help you a little bit. So people are always willing to spend the money for that edge. So what I'm getting at, the Python supposed to be able to go, has a history, a reputation of being one of the most accurate revolvers ever made. Laser bore sighted and all that. And it is very accurate. That old one and the new ones I'm assuming too. All right. Well made revolver, expensive. How come I never saw these in competition? And I'm not sure you do today. Anybody know of anybody shooting a python in revolver competition and USPSA action shooting, that sort of stuff? I, it's, it's just not popular. I, I don't, I'd be surprised if, you know, I'm sure someone does and someone will tell me, yeah, there's five people in my club that shoot them. I would be really surprised at that, okay? So, so that just gets, speaks to the ergonomics, I think I'm talking about. Also to the economics, because they're more expensive, right? And also maybe that timing issue that, you know, some people think is a myth and that I'm not sure uh, that it gets out of timing, you're gonna get to get to your gunsmith to, to fix it and all that sort of thing. Whereas you don't have as much of that with the Smith & Wesson. Probably more uh, grip, different grip combinations available for the Smith & Wesson, uh, maybe even more sights available because so many people do uh, have the more people would have the Smith & Wesson probably and just like anything else if it's really popular there's gonna be more aftermarket and that kind of thing for it so anyway just a different feel so as far as comparing uh, the Python again and, and this is the new Python uh, is really about twice as expensive as this so you get a new now this is a newer 686 it's a three inch but uh, yeah I don't know what this thing sells for now seven eight hundred bucks or something you know uh, same for this one, maybe eight, nine, you know, an older one, just depends. But you're talking 15, 16, maybe 17, I don't know, for a Python right now. They may come down in price uh, with availability, increased availability. But you're talking about almost twice the amount of money as far as going to a gun shop today. And if you happen to buy, say, this Python is in a shop, someone has one, or online, and then someone has a, a new 686 in the same barrel length, you're probably talking about twice the amount of money, okay? So price, twice as much on a Python. Uh, for me, not as ergonomic, maybe not the story for you. Uh, 
as far as quality and everything, no, no real problem. No problem. Some people, I think, on the Python, especially the old ones, they have more of a problem reaching the hammer easily. Uh, I, not a problem for me, of course, my large hands. Uh, so on that. Now, you could argue that on the Python, you get a, a smoother action. It's more glassy. You know, we always say it's like glass, and it is. Even on the 2020 Python, it's smooth. I mean, it just, oh boy. That, that feel, you could just sit and cop, uh, cock that thing all day because it just is so uh, enjoyable, soothing, you know, uh, so rewarding. It just feels great if you're a, a firearms person. You know, it's uh, like, oh boy, somebody did some polishing on that somehow, okay? And even in double action, it's, it's very smooth, okay? The Smith, no problems, but you don't have that, that same feel, you know, you don't, you just don't have it, okay? Now, most of you are not uh, trying to decide between these to go compete, probably. Uh, if you like to shoot double action, though, part of it is the grip ergonomics. But I, I don't feel like I can shoot double action. Even though it's a nice, smooth double action, it, I don't know, the gun moves on me. John kind of likes it better, I think, the way it recoils up in his hand. Uh, I prefer the Smith on that. In fact, let's shoot some Magnums here again. All right, I'll just shoot double action. For most people, there's not enough difference to write home about in terms of uh, the shootability and everything. Uh, you have to always remember, I've shot a great deal and it doesn't make me any smarter than anybody else, but I have a lot of experience, and so I've, I've become maybe more opinionated in some ways on some of these issues. Let me load them both so there's not much lag time between, <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll shoot them both double action here to remind myself. And again, you could change out the grips on the uh, Python, and it would be a better feeling firearm maybe for you. It would be for me if I just put the uh, vintage Python grips on it that are a little thicker, as I mentioned before in some of the earlier Python videos, you know, with this gun and the six inch model both. So I'm just gonna shoot double action, mess around here. Uh, I think the sights are on well enough, so as far as being able to hit something, I can't blame it on the sights. Oh, I don't know, let's just move around here. <laughs> Okay, well that's fresh on my mind. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, they both kind of want to move out of my hand, uh, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, so, I think when I really lock in on this one, I can hold it better without it moving on me than this grip. But I don't know, it, it, you probably wouldn't notice that much difference. Maybe I notice it more with lighter ammo. With the Magnums, both of them want to uh, need readjusting a little bit. Let me put 38 specials in while I'm thinking of some other lies to tell you about it. Shoot some. I don't want to forget that. So I'm going to shoot 38s. Uh, you know, there's lots of reasons we, we buy firearms, right? Uh, pride of ownership, just the quality. Uh, or because the opposite, because it was just, it shoots, it does what it's supposed to do, and it didn't cost much. You know, there's a lot of guns that, that fill that category, right? Uh, when you get into either one of these, you're getting into a nicer revolver. You're, you're into the Smith & Wesson, the Colt world, and of course the expensive side of the Colt world, and you're in the Python <laughs> category, right? Uh, both firearms are great. You would enjoy either one if you like revolvers. And uh, you're just going out to target shoot occasionally, you know, and you just love the feel and the looks of a python. You've always wanted a python. Hey, go for it. Go for it. Uh, again, I'm a little influenced just because I like to, I don't know, I don't say speed shoot. I don't do that much anymore. Or, but it's just the ergonomics of the Smith I, I like. But I enjoy both of them. I enjoy shooting both of them. It's really been fun to have the pythons back and, and be uh, shooting both this one and the six inch 2020 Python so much. You know, I've got my own too, made in 1981. I haven't had, but gosh, what about a year? So after going for a long time, decades, really without having Pythons, like I shot one once we borrowed, uh, it, it's been kind of fun to get back into it and remind myself why I hate them so much. No, I don't hate them, <laughs> but why I prefer the feel of the Smith. All right.
Uh, what was I going to do? I was just going to shoot. Uh, I'll do a little double and a little single. How about double action? Single. Cowboy. Plate. Yeah. Nice shooter. Those are more pleasant to shoot, I'll say. All right, let's go double action on the target over here. How about signal action? And I think I'm empty. Yeah. Uh, this one, I have to be careful. Uh, it has a light trigger, boy. It's single, single action. It's light. It's really light. I think maybe it's been worked on. Okay, so it's hard to compare uh, apples to apples on that. Those are all empty cases. Uh, the, the, the Python, you know, it's, it's a nice single action trigger. It's, it's light enough. You would have no problem with that. The other one was the same way, the six-incher. My 1981 Python, you know, the, the trigger's fine. It's just about right. Single action, double action is smooth. You know, so, uh, you know, you would not uh, have a problem with the action on it at all. And uh, this new, newer uh, 686, it's a three inch, that's why I'm not really comparing and shooting, is, uh, is sweet. It's got a nice double action. It's got a really nice single action, okay? So, I don't know, either one you would like. And uh, the, the Python is just beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> if if uh, for right now, I had the, the choice, you know, we borrow the, these from, you know, buds, of course, we just borrow those and they have to go back. Uh, man, if, if for some reason I could send either one of these back for the e-gunner and just keep the other one, it just didn't matter. I, I would have a tough choice on these two. I would, as much as I have talked about some preferences with the 686, uh, this is a pretty gun, really pretty and a good shooter. And, you know, I was thinking about buying one anyway, and uh, this sort of changed my mind, but you never know. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna say uh, you need to try them both. They're, they're both beautiful. If you've never had a Python you know, and you've got the money, you know, the... the Finances are not an issue. You might want to go that route, you know, over Smith and Wesson. There's a ton of 586s and or 686s out there. They're still making them, and they're great guns. Everybody knows about them. They're going to be available forever, of course. Uh, the pythons are a little harder to find. If you really like these, uh, you know, go for it. But uh, so I haven't helped you a lot because I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one I would advise you on. Uh, they're both great guns. They're great shooters. And uh, you, mainly, you need to have a revolver uh, because they're a lot of fun. They really are. And uh, the Smith is, uh, is not a bad-looking gun either. It's just that the old Python, as I always say, is kind of the supermodel of all firearms, perhaps, uh, especially revolvers. Okay? So price-wise, you're talking about twice as much money, probably. And, but, you know, great gun, uh, 2020 Python or, or a vintage. And I'll, I'll link to the first video, and hopefully you've seen the other video on the 6-inch version. And even the very first video we did where we had a problem with it, and we've talked about that. And, uh, you know, Colt has addressed it. So all that's out there. So do your research before you buy either one, because you would have to decide if you did say, hey, I need one of those. Do you need a vintage 686? Do you need a new one? Uh, do you need a vintage Python? Do you want a 2020 version? You know, so you have decisions to make. Maybe you're not going to buy either one, so you have no decisions to make other than, am I going to keep watching this video? He's gone way too long. Yeah, I've never done that before, ever. So anyway, we, <laughs> look at that mess. <laughs> we, uh, and I've got this stuff out here, not because I was expecting trouble, <laughs> but with a revolver, you never know. I do have my screwdrivers handy, you know and uh, my cleaning van, my brush. If you get some uh, powder residue behind that, that extractor and you have a little bit of trouble, you have big trouble. You gotta clean it before it'll work again, okay? <laughs> Generally speaking, when you have a clean revolver and you load it up and shoot, you're not gonna have trouble. But maybe after you've shot several cylinders, something like that does happen uh, and you, you need to clean it before it'll really work for you again. 
So anyway, like I said, I'm going too long. Appreciate you supporting the people that support us. And uh, you know, let me know if you have either one of these in whatever barrel length and why you prefer uh, one over the other. Okay, I've given you some of the reasons I prefer the Smith and what I like about the, the Colt. Uh, if you have, and many of you, if you've been collecting guns and shooting for a number of years or decades, you've had experience with both. What is it that you like to help you know, new viewers? What is it that you really like about the Colt or the Python specifically you know, over the Smith or, or vice versa? You know, if you had bad experiences with one over the other certain areas, uh, let us know. Let the viewers know. Okay? Good to see y'all. Life is good. Oh, yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the Internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.